OK, let's head elsewhere in Washington, D.C. Rena Shah is a political advisor and political commentator, and she joins me live on the line now. Welcome to you, Rena. Um, I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect a lot of U.S. voters don't know that much about Kamala Harris in terms of her background, her political beliefs. Certainly, they don't know as much about her anyway as they know about Donald Trump. Do you think a, a relative lack of familiarity um, with Kamala Harris, does that work in her favour or against her with the electorate? Well, looking at the match right now, it does seem to be a foregone conclusion that Kamala Harris will be the one to face off against Donald Trump in November. We're still 100 some days out. And I will say, uh, yes, the American public has long been acquainted with Donald Trump and not just his big personality, but what he thinks about the issues, uh, definitely since he came down that golden escalator in 2015. So 2016 onwards, he has never left the spotlight. Now, Vice President Harris did try to get that Democratic nomination ahead of 2020 and did not fare well in that pack. Her campaign didn't work out. It wasn't successful. And there were even reports of uh, financial problems with it. Now, what type I'm not fully aware of entirely as I haven't done that research because, again, her campaign folded rather quickly in the primary process and Joe Biden won. But when she was named his running mate, all was sort of forgotten and things moved on and forward and, and they won in 2020. And of course, she's a sitting vice president, but that doesn't make it... Um, uh, you know, we shouldn't assume there that everybody just knows how she feels on the issues. We know front of mind right now for voters, especially, is economy, immigration, climate even, and abortion, as well as foreign affairs. So what are, what are her thoughts on those issues? These are the days now ahead where she will start to acquaint the American public with her views in those key areas. The campaign, I believe, is hitting a bit of a reset entirely because not only was she just Joe's running last time and this time, it's time to show the American public what she thinks the solutions are to our nation's greatest challenges. Yeah, you said it's important for voters to know where she stands on the key areas. Also, I would say key geographical areas, because whenever we watch US presidential elections, everyone talks about the swing states as being, you know, the key to winning. How do you think she will be viewed in those key states? Well, certainly we've got the Rust Belt versus the Sun Belt. And in the Sun Belt, uh, Nevada, um, Arizona and Georgia, those are places that uh, former President Donald Trump has pulled well in in recent months. And then the Rust Belt is uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Uh, we're looking at those states, of course, as being uh, part of the swing state, pack of swing states, seven of them. Were, th those states are really going to determine the outcome of this election. But I also say to you, American women are going to determine the outcome of this election because abortion, reproductive rights, and access are still very much on the ballot this November. And how the potential first woman president could speak to that issue and who she can bring in and build a coalition with is going to be imperative. So again, the geographical distance, uh, the differences are there and Democrats have pulled well in Rust Belt in general, but we're seeing a very tight race still. We don't have very good numbers to tell us what Trump and Vance, what their bump is after the Republican National Convention. I think still a very much an anything could happen race, despite this momentum over the past uh, day and a half for Kamala. Harris ever since Biden gave her his endorsement. Rena, please stay on the line because there's something I want to talk to you, uh, slightly different news, which just came in just recently. I just want to bring that information to our viewers because the US media has been reporting that the director of the Secret Service, you may have seen this in live coverage from the uh, US House Oversight Committee, Kimberly Cheadle, uh, she was being called upon to resign. She has now resigned just a day after admitting that her agency had failed to prevent the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Cheadle has faced criticism and calls to step down from both Republicans and Democrats following the former president's ear being shot by a 20-year-old gunman during a presidential campaign in Butler, Pennsylvania. She described that incident as, quote, the most significant operational failure at the Secret Service in decades. Uh, coming back to you, Rena Shah, um, I mean, to be fair to Kimberly Cheadle, she did open yesterday by one of the first things she said was, you know, I, I take responsibility for this. So I suppose from that moment on, it was inevitable that she was going to step down. But I also want to bring to you, and this is even more recent, this has just been posted by Donald Trump on his own network, Truth Social, and he said, the Biden administration did not protect me. That's it's pretty damning, isn't it, from, from Donald Trump? 
Well, I'll tell you why he says that. It's because Kimberly Cheadle was part of uh, Biden's detail, Secret Service protective detail, when he was vice president. So he has a long history uh, with her. And he's already put out a statement President Biden has thanking her for her service, essentially. Uh, so, uh, that, of course, Trump would take the line that, that you know, this is Biden's administration that has left him unprotected and, and had that uh, assassination attempt to be almost successful. I mean, just a couple inches, and we probably would uh, have seen the former President Trump pass away right there and then, right there and then on that rally stage. So it's it's definitely a moment that shocks the consciousness. I have to be very clear. I was not even born yet in 1981 when former President Reagan was shot by a would-be assassin. So uh, to have watched that rally, and I was watching it in real time, I certainly felt very shocked, even more so than I did when I saw uh, former President Trump duck and uh, sort of touch his ear. I was even more shocked when I heard more um, what seemed like gunshots going off and screaming, even after uh, former President Trump took to the ground, was put to the ground by agents that rushed the stage. That was very shocking. So there were a lot of failures there, but the biggest failure was a failure of communication and coordination between U.S. Secret Service and, and local law enforcement. You know, look, these rural areas are very hard to protect because it was an open space. This was not an indoor arena. Multiple roofs were open, and, and in an open space like that, anything is possible. So I do see the challenges that were there, uh, but certainly if Director Cheadle had remained in her role, she would have been vulnerable to so much more criticism. And her appearance before a House committee yesterday was pretty disastrous. They felt her answers were not uh, sufficient. They felt she came unprepared. Some members, even on the dais, such as Congresswoman Nancy Mace, using uh, profanity towards her because they were just so angry that under her leadership, this assassin assassination attempt occurred. It's clear because he was shot in the ear he, that Donald Trump was inches away from losing his life. Um, do you think that that particular moment, and, I, and I'm thinking specifically about how Donald Trump reacted in that moment, could it be the moment that wins in the election? Well, from what we know now, the bullet grazed his ear and um, the injuries were not enough to, of course, saddle him. Uh, he wears the ear patch. He did uh, during the entire week of the Republican National Convention. But what is most stark and what is the, the sort of uh, most stunning imagery out of that entire event is him pushing his fist up and coming up through the huddle of Secret Service agents that are trained to go over him and keep him under that huddle until they get him to a safe location. He emerged from the ground from which they to which they tackled him with that fist up in the air, even with his ear bloodied from that bullet grazing it. It was truly, truly uh, a moment that the only word that can describe it is defiant. And will that be the imagery that Americans carry into November and feel some kind of way about? Does it change their attitude about the man? I don't know. We don't really have any good uh, indication that it will, uh, but certainly it will go down as mm -hmm. one of the most uh, magnificent moments of all time, because I, I say that not to to try to draw any color on it or give my opinion there. But my gosh, mm -hmm. that just shows that Amer the American spirit is well and alive. It doesn't matter who it's through. Rena, it's been great to speak to you. Appreciate your assessment of the situation. Um, political commentator Rena Shah, my guest. Thank you.